Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending today's session. My name is Nicole Boone. I am project manager on Checkbook. I'm here with Ed Sokolowski, who is director of application development in our office. And um, I just want to start off by sort of finding out everyone's level of competency with Checkbook. How many people who are on today have actually never been to Checkbook or never sat in on one of these sessions before? Maybe like a show of hands or something in the chat. So far, I see one person. One person. Okay. So um, we're just going to lightly do an overview of the functionality before we get into the how to do a search so that you understand what's available in Checkbook. But because this session is more dedicated to um, searches and how to search for the data, it's going to be a very light um, overview. So I would suggest that if you've not done the overview before, maybe when they publish the recorded events, go back, watch the overview, see everything that's available to you in Checkbook, um, and then this session will probably make more sense as well. Okay, so um, when you come to Checkbook, you're going to automatically be taken to the spending app. You can tell you're in the spending section because the box is blue and the arrow is pointing down. On every landing page in Checkbook, um, there are three layered tiers. You have the citywide version of information, then you have the agency level of information, and then you have your vendor level of information. So let's take a look. First, we're looking at the citywide level. You first have these graph rep representations. By hovering over a graph piece, you can see the underlying data. And there are several different graphs. And then by clicking on grid view, you can see the underlying information and you can export your results. Uh, immediately when you're taken to checkbook, you're also taken to the current fiscal year, which is fiscal year 23. Our fiscal year runs from July 1st of the prior year through June 30th of the present fiscal of the present year. So on our top, we have the overall spending for the city as of today, which is 79.9 billion. As you come to this bottom navigation, you we will break out that spending into payroll spending, capital spending, contract spending, trust and agency, and other. If you were to click on any one of these boxes, the entire page would refresh just to show that type of spending. So if you just want to look at capital spending, you could click on that box and everything will be related to capital spending. And then we come down to our widgets. We have top five checks, top five agencies, top five expense categories, top five prime vendors, top five contracts, MOX registered contract spending, and top five agencies by payroll spending. Each widget can expand. So if I click on the plus button, my widget will go from the top five to the top 150. If I click on the details link, I'm gonna be taken to a narrow down faceted search page. So at the top, I can see this is representing all 79.93 billion in spending to date. It's gonna take the page a second to load as it's a lot of information. And then if I wanted, I could narrow it down say by like the Department of Education or by a, a particular vendor within the Department of Education. Once I've narrowed down my results to exactly what I wanna see, then I can just click my export button, and then I choose whether I want a range or whether I want all pages. And notice that the maximum amount of results is 200,000. So there, that's important you know, for the future. And then I just download my data. Here we go. And there you go. You have it in an Excel spreadsheet. All the data is downloadable, which is a really nice aspect of checkbook. So let's go back. To home. So now I'm going to show you how this app works within the top navigation. So we have what's called the spending feature dashboard. It shows subsets of the overall spending. So if you want to see 
what MWB, what spending is going to simply MWBEs, our minority vendors, then you can just click on the MWBE box. Note the box now, the sub vendor area has, is just showing MWB sub vendors. And we have our visuals at the top. Hovering over shows you the information. You can play with which areas you want to look at. And again, you can export by going to grid view. The um, page is refreshed just to show MWBE information. In each of our widgets, you can see the percent of spending that's going to MWBEs. You can see exactly what the prime vendors MWB category is. You can see what the sub vendors category is, the percentage of spending that's going to them. You can see the top contracts by MWBEs. And then you can see the spending by industry. If I click over here on the sub vendor side, likewise, it'll just show you information for MWB sub vendors. Now, if I just go back to home, if I were to click on sub vendors first, Note the MWB side now becomes strictly about MWB sub vendors and the sub vendor side. Hold on. There we go. It's just got to refresh a little bit. And now we're just showing sub vendor information. We can see the sub, we see who the prime is, we can see the top five agencies. Um, and this is really nice because you can see exactly which agency is hiring sub vendors and how many sub vendors they presently have hired. Um, we can see the top five sub vendors by spending amount, top five primes, and then we can see the top five sub contracts. So now we're just going to take a quick look over to contracts. Oh, one last thing about spending. Um, checkbook can be very difficult to navigate in terms of remembering, like once you start going down a rabbit hole, it can be really easy to get stuck and forget how you got there. And when you have a question, it can, it can be really all about how you got there can be, you know, part of the issue. So to make things a little easier and to keep you within the domain that you started in, um, say you wanted to look at a particular contract, but you're in the spending app. If I click on that, you'll get a pop-out page. Just let that load. You can see all of the contract information and we'll go over that really quickly soon. Um, and then you can close it and you're still exactly where you started your start. You're, you're still in the spending side of things. Okay, we're just gonna click over to contract. If you guys have any questions, you can post it in the chat and I'll go through and take a look at it. I'll answer right. your questions. Um, Again, we have our visualizations. If you hover over them, you can see the information. And now here at the top, this number at the top represents the amount of, of registered contract, um, the registered contract amount for this fiscal year. So right now we have 19.9 billion in registered contract. Um, and then down below, we break out what we have in terms of active contracts, registered contracts, um, revenue contracts, and pending contracts. So just to explain that very quickly, um, an active contract is any contract whose period of performance is um, prior to today's date, or sorry, is, is um, sorry, let me, let me say that one more time. It's period of performance is greater than or equal to today's date. So it means anything that it's all the contracts that are out there that are that still haven't met their end date. Whereas a registered contract is any contract that was registered within this fiscal year. So they are a subset of the overall active contracts. So overall, the city has 20,908 active contracts, totaling $190.3 billion. Um, we have 8,321 of registered contracts just this year, equaling $19.8 billion. Um, and then moving over to the pending contract side, pending contracts are only pending for 30 days. Uh, that's sort of when they start their clock down to registration. Once a pending contract becomes registered, it takes about two days before it um, 
shows up on the registered side of checkbook. So it'll drop out of pending. If you're looking for it in pending and you can't find it, it may be that it's ended its time clock, its countdown. And now it's in that two days where it's waiting to get uploaded as a registered contract um, on the registered side. Does that make sense to everyone? Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Um, so we have different types of contracts. We have master agreements. Master agreements are parent agreements to child uh, contracts. So we have our MMA ones and our MA one contracts. Then we have our modifications to our master agreement. We have our top five contracts. These are independent contracts or the children of the parents. Um, then we have our top five contract amount modifications. This is really great because you can see how much a contract started at, where it is now, and the percentage difference between where it started and where it is. And that might be a flag for problems. That might not be a flag for issues. It really sort of depends on the kind of contract we're looking at. Then we have our MOX registered COVID-19 contracts and our top five prime vendors by contract amount, um, top five award methods, top five agencies, contracts by industry, and then contracts by size. Again, just like in the spending app, hitting the plus sign gives us our top 150, hitting the details link brings us to a narrow down faceted page. So what I wanna pause here and go over are the different, uh, parts of what make up a contract ID. Um, so a contract ID is made up, it starts with letters, then numbers. So I'm just gonna break it down. The, so I'm pointing up here to the first um, master agreement. The MMA1 represents the type of contract it is. It is a master agreement. Then the 801 represents the agency number. The 2022 is the date in which this, this um, contract was registered. And then the 2022 through to the end is what is generally in the public seen as the contract ID. We add these other numbers as identifiers um, and you can search without having the whole number, but we'll get onto that in a second. In case you are trying, you're trying to piece together like, oh, I see this contract. I wonder what agency it's from, or you're wondering what an agency number is. Um, we have the agency numbers up here under the site navigation and glossary. You can just go to agency codes and here are agency codes and each of the agencies. Let me go back to contract. Okay. So at this point, oh, and just quickly, so just like we have in the spending side, on the contract side, we have the contracts feature dashboard. So when we're in contracts, the dashboard changes to contracts. If I click on MWBE, the whole page will refresh to just MWBE um, contracts. If I click in this little um, triangle, say I just wanted to see Asian contracts, I could just click on Asian American, and then the whole page would refresh only to show Asian American contracts. Um, and then again, on the sub vendor side, I'm gonna click over there. We know we're in sub vendors because the arrow is pointing down. Now we have um, a different lower dashboard. We can see our total active sub vendor contracts our new sub vendor contracts, and then we can see status of prime vendor, of sub vendor contracts by a prime vendor. So the page is refreshed. I'm looking at my top five subs, top five primes, top five award methods, top five agencies, contracts by industry and contracts by size. And so I'm just gonna hop over because these widgets are fairly the same as all the widgets you're gonna see. The, now where there's a difference is the status by sub vendor contract. Let this page load. So what we've added here is um, contracts, sub, sub vendor contracts are added to our payment information portal by the prime vendor. 
So we wanted to have some sort of visual accountability to who is getting their information into PIP, who is not getting their information into PIP, just to have some sort of checks and balances. Um, so you can see that right now um, in our top uh, contract status by prime vendor ID, this information hasn't been provided, which means we're not doing great at getting the information into PIP all the time. Um, and in that, uh, the sub-vendor information is only as good as the information put into the system. So if we come down to our second widget, we can see the summary of prime contract sub-vendor reporting. So I can see the Department of Education, they have 453 contracts. Um, there are 310 of them that the Prime did not need to put their information into PIP. Uh, there are 143 that were there were no response to the Prime, which means that there are no sub vendor reporting. There's no sub vendor reporting right now in PIP for the Department of Education. Um, but if we move down and look at an example like the Department of Design and Construction, they have 261 contracts, 61 of them, they do not have to, their primes do not have to put into PIP. Um, 56 don't have a, a response, but they have six that don't, they absolutely don't have sub vendors um, reported. And then they do have 138 with sub vendors reported. So they're doing a really good job at reporting their sub vendors. And then the last um, just shows basically where the contracts are in terms of whether they're in a review process, whether they've been reviewed or whether that contract's been rejected. So if you're a sub vendor and you're looking at this, you can sort of get an idea or actually really, if you're, if you are working at the department of design and construction, this is great for you because you can see exactly how many of your contracts are still being reviewed by your ACO, how many have been approved already. It's just a really quick dashboard to let you know where you are. Okay, so I think that that covers basic features um, to go over. And now we're gonna jump into smart search, advanced search and um, data feeds. So I'm just gonna come home. So smart search I generally use when I am coming at, I'm, I'm looking for data and I'm not really sure exactly what I need maybe or what I'm looking for. Um, sometimes it's, I want to see everything that I can find about a contract or a contract number or something to that effect. So for instance, just going to copy a contract number and stick it in. So immediately I can see that this contract has 128 spending transactions and it's just obviously one contract. That's all I put in. Um, I can now go in, I can click on spending, and then I can export all of the spending results for this contract. So again, and it also has um, an autocomplete. So if I start typing the name of a known entity, it'll autocomplete for me, and then I can choose the version or of the company that I am looking for. Uh, and again, I can see that they've got two contracts and they've got 1,407 spending transactions. Um, I can quickly just check the years of these spending transactions. I can check if there's any MWB categories. I can check the industries and I can narrow down any of these results and export them. Um, so let's move over to advanced search. I think that that's pretty basic, the smart search. So now coming over to advanced search, here's where I probably want to know a few things about um, what I'm looking for. I often get requests from journalists I or from just people within our agency, and I may not know very much about the topic that they want to look up. Um, recently, I had a request to look up tree work that was being done around the city. I didn't know anything about it and I wasn't sure which agency was handling it. I assumed it was parks. I didn't know um, what kind of program it was. So the first thing I did was actually go out to the internet and see if I could find any articles about it because that can lead me in a direction about 
the agencies that are involved, if there's a program name to it, um, articles are really, really great for that. Yesterday, when we were all gathered in the basic session, somebody said, well, what, where's the spending to libraries going? So I was like, great question. Let's look up spending for libraries. So my first um, step would be to look for um, the different library systems. So I went to city agencies. We've got the Brooklyn Public Library. We have New York Public Library. We have the New York Research Library. And then we've got the Queens Library, which I don't see where it is right here, but we have the Queens Borough Library. So since there's so many systems, I had to go in and do a search on each library and download their spending. Um, so I did it for all year. So I, so I did it for 2023 to see all active contracts for each of the libraries. But that's not where I ended. I also went over to the contract side and I did the same thing for contracts. I looked up each of the libraries. I looked up each of their, all of their contracts and downloaded them into an Excel file. I then, I'm just going to slip out of this. I then created an Excel spreadsheet where I started in my tabs. I've got, first, I downloaded all of the Brooklyn Library spending, and then I downloaded their contracts. Now, you'll notice they've got 2.7 million in contract spending. But if you go over to this section, to the spending section, they have 115 million in spending on the spending side. So part of this is that I um, have only downloaded contracts that are active in 2023. Um, and I did the spending for 2023. But if you'll notice, my contracts are M MA1s, they are um, CT1s, they're CTA1s. Those are considered contracts within the city. And we can see some of them here. We can see CT1s, we can see CTA1s, but we're, we're also getting PCCs, P PONs, PCRs, so and DO1s will come up. So there are there, there are things that are expenditures that are not considered contracts. So you are going to get more spending on the spending side than you will on the contract side most times. And so it's not enough just to look at the contract spending, see what they've spent throughout all the years and say, oh, that's what they spent because you would be missing millions and millions of dollars in spending. And that's where, you know, things get tricky. The New York financial system is as big as some small countries. So it's not as simple as just I want to see this and you get this. It, it can be, it can, you really have to act as a detective sometimes and try to dig down into the data and it, it can take time. I mean, to get everything, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tabs of information that took, you know, a bit of time to organize and to compare the sheets and to look at everything. So I guess, I mean, I don't want to be disheartening, but it's not as simple as just opening up checkbook and asking for a result and getting it. You really have to know a little bit about the city finances and how they work uh, to get to an answer. So let me go back into checkbook. Apologies. One second. Great. Let me go home. I'm going to come back. So advanced search is limited as well. I think that um, we mentioned that I can only get 200,000 rows of data and oftentimes I will get enormous amounts of um, data. So in that case, I would wanna go over to data feeds, which we're gonna touch on next. I wanted to show you one more example. Um, someone from yesterday also mentioned they wanted to know more about homeless services. And this one was like, I wasn't really sure where to start. I assume that many um, agencies work on issues uh, for homeless services. So um, my best bet at this point is to use the purpose field. So I came over to contracts and I just put in the word homeless under the purpose field. I want I don't want to be too narrow when I'm searching the purpose field because the purpose field 
it's a free form field and it can have many different um, words within it. So I just want to put the most obvious word that I want to see pop up in every contract that's related to this. Um, I chose 2023 and click submit. Um, I already did this last night, so I'm just going to pull up the spreadsheet. So here we got a result of 257 contracts dealing with homeless services. And you can go through on the purpose field and see exactly what work was being done in homeless services. Now, again, just as in my last search, I'm never going to trust that just the contract spending amount is going to be all of the spending for homeless services. Now, I did not do this process through 257 different contracts, but I did do the first three. So I made tabs of the spending for the first three contracts. It's not a ton of information, but it's enough for each tab because each contract. And so if I were to add up each of these check amounts for all 257, I hopefully would come close to the number on the contract side, but not necessarily. And that's why we have to go through that process. Um, another way to find information would be, we have um, added to the spending records, we have added budget codes. So if you know which budget codes you want to find information on, um, that can be easier. So like, um, I may know that, let's go back to trees, the, depart the parks department is doing tree planting. And I may have the budget codes for that. I may know all the budget codes. So I would just download everything that I had for the parks department. And then I would filter my selection by the budget codes that I know are budgeting the program that I am looking for. And that would be a very succinct way to sort of back end, find the information you're looking for. Um, that was a lot of information in a short period. I just want to take a pause and make sure everyone's still with me and that nobody has any questions so far. So Nicole, we do have, at some point, we want to leave a little bit of time to talk about the revenue domain, okay? Okay. I will help you with that one. Great. Okay. Um, okay, here's a question. Is there somewhere on a website where you can access the budget code list? Um, there is, so if you go into advanced search, I'm just gonna pull it up. If you go into advanced search and into budget, if you don't know the budget code, you can look by name. Um, budget codes are not individual. So you will probably need to understand, you know, what your budget code is doing. So for instance, if I just click budget code 001, now I've got three different budget code names to choose from to see which budget code is my correct budget code. Um, now there is a slight difference between the budget codes that we have under the budget domain and the budget codes that end up on the spending file. And the reason is that, um, FISA may be coming up with some budget codes on the fly that we haven't been told about yet. So we have a table of budget codes within the budget side, but FISA might have some budget codes. Like usually they, uh, you'll know because they are uh, letters rather than numbers that'll show up on the um, spending side. And because they're coming in on the spending record, they're up to date. They are coming in directly from FISA as they are appearing but they may not have been updated yet onto the budget table. So just be aware, you may come across some budget codes that do not show up in the budget table under the budget advanced search. And that is the reason there's a lapse between getting that table up to date with everything that's coming in on the spending file. So Nicole, drop down the budget code again. You see for that 001, just click on, okay. So you can see here that the, the budget codes are unique within an agency. Right, they're not unique across the city. So that's why for zero, zero, 001, you have, depending on the agency that's using it, they have different names and meanings. Correct. So, so that's something else you have to be, be to worry about. Okay. Um, so now I'm just gonna move on to data feeds. You've come up to your top bar here. It's right in the middle. I'm gonna click on data feeds. 
you can choose the type of data you want and what kind of file you would like it exported into and hit next. I can choose my agency. And then I can, I can choose whatever criteria that I have in advanced search here. I'm going to choose all years because I know it's a lot. Um, and then I'm going to look at my columns. I'm going to decide which columns I would like to have in my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to add them all. And I'm going to click submit. Okay, so this is only 55,000 records. Um, so if I, so in, the data is now ready for me, but now imagine it was a million records, which it could easily be over a million records. If that were the case, I would, um, they would ask for my email. I would place my email in there. And then in my email, when the records were ready, they would give me a tracking number. I would put the tracking number in here, hit go, and my files would download. So Data feeds is really where I go when I'm working with a lot of data and I know that it's going to be big records. Now, call um, cover, now cover APIs too. We yeah. have a question about APIs. Absolutely. So if you click on the tab next to data feeds, here are our APIs. We get um, general information about the APIs. And then if I click on a specific area, you get all of the parameters for that app. Okay. Um, so at this point, I think um, we'll check out revenue and then I would like to see if anyone has a search that they're currently doing that maybe we can talk about. So I'm going to come over to revenue. So our, we, we start with our um, visualizations. We're showing our recognized revenue versus our remaining revenue for the year. Then we have fiscal year comparisons, 2020 to 20, the recognized versus remaining, 2021 recognized versus remaining, 22, and then obviously 23, we're not done with the fiscal year yet. So we have our top five agencies. Uh, we show the adopted budget, the modified budget, the recognized, and then the remaining recognized budget. Top five revenue categories and then revenue by funding class. Are there any specific questions about revenue we'd like to? Yeah, so go on the revenue categories, Nicole, click on the recognized on the taxes, the 54, On the taxes, okay. Yeah, click on that. So there was, a question, there was a question about, do we show the breakouts by the taxes, types of tax? And, so if you look in this category, in this grouping here, the extracts, you can see some, you can see some of the groupings. So if you slide, go down and slide over to the right. All right. Okay. And there's your revenue classes, sales tax, and you scroll up, you get income taxes. So in here, when you download this, is where you can see more information on the, the where the taxes and the fund classes and the categories for that. And as with everything, everything is exportable. Right. And this is, you're on 23, right? This is 23. You're in a 22. Yep. Which means I'm in 23. 23. So this is the plan. At, this is the adopted budget as of the, with the, between the mayor and the city council. So this gets posted when, when it gets, when FISA gets the okay, they send us the, uh, the data, the plan data, and it gets loaded up. Um, one more thing before we take on personal um, questions. We also have a create alert. I really like this feature. It looks a lot like advanced search. I'm just going to open it up. I can, I'm good. Each tab is one of the domains. I'm going to go to spending. Actually, I'm going to go to contracts. So uh, my example is what if I want to see every time there's a new pending contract? So I'm going to come up here to pending. I'm going to hit next. It shows me what the pending contracts are currently. Take a look, say, yes, these are the results I want. I hit next. Then I fill in my description, my email, and I want my minimum results to be one. And I want it to happen daily until the 30th. I schedule my alert. And now I don't have to even concentrate on checkbook. I don't have to think about it. Checkbook is going to email me and let me know that there is a new pending contract out there for me to take a look at. So 
does anybody have any searches that they're doing that they're, you know, having some issues with, maybe not sure how to get all of the information out of checkbook and they could use some advice? While they're thinking, let me let me post a question here. So the question is, should the funding amounts in checkbook line up with the AF, ACFR, Annual Comprehensive Financial Reports? Um, they do not. Checkbook does not reflect the interagency eliminations. So if you look at if you look at the CAFRA in detail, you'll see there we lo we line up to a certain point where things the funding and everything lines up. But when the in, when but the the interagency or inter intergovernmental um, is not included, so the eliminations are not there. Uh, let's see. Here's one for you, Nicole. Is there a way to search exclusively for contracts or spending related to the opioid settlement dollars? Ooh, that's a good one. It's a great one because again, I know nothing about it. So mm. <laughs> um, I would need more information. Probably, I would need to know more about the program. Um, I would probably run a search on Google just to understand. Uh, who might even be handling this program? Do you have any more information about this that we could start with? Well, Nicole, just for the, for the heck of it, go to go to contracts. Was it a contracts of spending? Do the search on uh, or OPO settlements. See if there's anything out there. Yeah, we'll put it into the purpose field. That's always a yeah. That's a, always that's a good stab of, point. <laughs> yeah, that's the first step we usually do, right? We just do that. Just one second. I'm just gonna clear my cache. There we go. Okay, so we're looking for opioid settlement. Yeah. Opioid. Am I spelling that right? Yeah, OP. Is it an E? No, it's an I. O -P -I opioid. O Got it. Opioid, yeah. Okay. All years, let's see. Nope. Nothing under that name. Um, but that happens a lot because if it's a program um, underneath something else, it, it doesn't necessarily come up that way. I would probably, my next bet would be to understand which agencies were involved in this program. Um, my guess is health and hospitals was probably involved. Um, I'm not sure. I would probably start there and download their contracts. Uh, just to see what has been done, I would I would do their spending as well, just to find out what they've spent money on. Because opioid settlement, I would hope would come up. Let's let's look at spending just really quickly and see. And I bet you there are a lot of other agencies involved in something like this as well. Um, I'm going to assume 2023. Sometimes it takes a while to search through all of the millions of records that are in checkbook. And for a program like that, too, I would try to find out whether they had certain budget codes assigned to um, that spending, because that would make it quite easy. Okay, we still haven't loaded all of the data yet. Apologize for the slowness. There's nothing here that will help me. Don't know why this is taking quite so long. One second. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. I'm just going to refresh my screen. There we go. Export my results. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the expense categories. Maybe we'll get lucky. There's nothing specific there. Look at the purpose field. This might be more telling. All right. We have some questions out here. So, okay. So I don't see anything. Um, I apologize, Ed. Um, that's so right. we would just need more information to find out more about this program. I'm not saying that it's not in checkbook. I'm saying that it is not obvious. And so we would need to do a bit more digging. Again, you have to sort of be a detective trying to find some of some of the information. I'll go. Uh, sorry, Ed, go ahead. Okay. Um, is it possible to see payments to sub vendors and subcontractors? It seems some contracts have this information and others do not. So within the sub vendor domain, um, you'll see the prime vendor as a way to see the prime vendor and, and the payments made from the prime vendor to the sub vendor. Information is only there if the prime vendor has entered their sub vendor information into the PIP system with an FMS 
and it's been approved by the ACO, each agency ACO. Once that sub vendor has been approved, the prime vendor must go in and enter that data. If no data is entered, then you will not see it in the sub vendor screens. Is there a way to sort the search by check amounts? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. The screen, yeah, you can actually- screen On the main screens? Main screens, right? You can sort by check amount. Yeah. So if I, I can sort up or down in my widgets. So I can do top to bottom, bottom to top. All right, so we're getting back to the question about the funding, uh, the opioid settlement. Go look at budget code OP04. Go to advanced Four. search for the it opioid. It, OP04 will not be in advanced search, but I can try. You can try? I would need the agency. Um, and then find, and then drill down on the budget number from there. Okay, let me see. I'm clicking on the link here. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's OP04 is here. We rarely get the, <laughs> the letters in there. Great. So then oh, the budget good. name is opioid settlement. That's how you get it. Now we can get. And it's the Department of Health and it's the part of, of health and mental hygiene is in the uh, is in a link that was sent. Let's see. So this is great. So now what I would do is I would download all of the spending transactions from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and I would look for that budget code OP04 on the payment. And that would be a direct link to exactly how much was spent. But let's see what it's been budgeted for. I'm just going to take a second for it to download. And in fact, while that's doing that, I am going to look it up on the other side. It's taking a sweet time. It is taking its sweet time. Sorry, this is some of the... The less than exciting parts of sitting in front of a checkbook screen and downloading data. It's a little slow today. And it's only two records, which is odd. But I am opening up the spending records for this, for health and hospitals. I did all year. So now I'm just going to filter. I'm going to filter on budget code. And I'm going to look for... OP04. And interesting, it doesn't come out of my spending records. They may not have had any, they may not have spent anything on the settlement yet. That is also a possibility. And that may be the reason why we're not getting it in the spending records. So that in itself may be the reason. And um, I'm just going to refresh this. Let's see if anything pops up on the contract side. On the budget side, yeah. So here we go. I see a modified budget of 13 million, right? Yeah. Right. So it's, yeah, modified budget of 13 million. Okay. It's committed. And pre incumbent, incumbent, incumbent. They have made a cash payment. So I. Uh, $7 million? I'm just looking. Department of Health. Yeah. They've made a $7 million payment and they still have $6 million remaining. Right. Cool. The question so, is where to go. That's a great question. And honestly, if you leave me your email, I will I'll dip deeper on this and try to help you find the information on the spending side. I believe it's there. I believe that we just need a little more time to look for it. All right. So there's one more question I see. Go to um go go to the sub vendor page. Okay. Let's go all the way back. Let's go back into Spending and contracts and uh, sub vendors. All right. Okay. So we're looking for we're looking for uh, is it possible to see payments to sub vendors and subcontractors? So let's just give us just give a show for that. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So um, these are subcontracts. Yeah, these so are subcontracts. On, yeah. So click on one of those. Okay. Waste management. Okay. Either one. Waste management's a big one. They show a lot of sub vendors. My pages are taking so long. There we go. Great. So they have six sub vendors and they've spent 5.78 thousand on those vendors to date. And if we come down, you see the the contract has read by the prime. You see spending transactions by prime. And then down here you get the spending by the sub vendors. So we'll so, see so, like New York and Atlantic Railway Company the ACO yeah, so, is reviewing the sub vendor 
So this yeah, is can... this is this is a really good example because it shows what we were just like what I was talking about. So there are it looks like it's a newer contract, two hundred two million dollar contract. Um, the sub vendors have been listed. The sub vendors were entered into the the payment information portal at, at, at Pfizer. Now the ACO is reviewing the data, right? The first one, um, the second one had nothing submitted yet. ACO review and ACO reviewing, and then as you go down here, you see some of an ACO approved one, right? And so then there was a payment made. So this gives you an idea. This is a this is a vendor who's following the rules that the city laid out uh, for uh, for recording their uh, sub vendors and also doing the payments. There are many other vendors who don't do this. Um, so I think this is some uh, this is one of the areas I think overall the city has to figure out how to enforce this in a way that requires all primes to put in their sub vendors. Any other mess? Any other questions, guys? Some of these deep dives are difficult. Um, I'm going to leave my email in the chat in case you have any particular problems while you're doing a search. I can always, I'm always available to help guide you through your search and to try to get the data out. Now, Checkbook was initially created as a transparency app so everyone could kind of see what was happening with the money in the city. And over time, um, it's really become a place where people can come and data mine and find um, particular things that they're looking for for the city. So as we build it out, we include more information than maybe we originally started with. So it's not as though we can pull everything out of checkbook that you would be able to pull out of FMS. We don't have that capacity, but we do have a lot of capacity. So um, it may not always be here, but we are happy to help you find it. And let me put my email into the chat right now. And thank you so much, Nicole and, and Ed, for this uh, peek at some of the detective work that, that you do and um, showing some of these more advanced ways of using checkbook. Um, thank you all for coming so much. We appreciate it.